So, Gordon, thanks for talking to us today. You're welcome. Can you tell, tell us briefly about your pre-Harwell life? Where you were born and how you grew up and where you were educated and so on? I don't think it's any secret that I was born <laughs> in Scotland, in a village about 10 miles from Glasgow. And I was educated at the local grammar school and went to local university. So, so you went to Glasgow University? Yes, I was there for a period of seven years, four years with my initial degree in maths and physics and that was good training for a PhD in nuclear physics. My field of interest in nuclear physics was actually elementary particle physics, which is still flourishing at Rutherford. There were very few places where one could pursue nuclear physics, the research of nuclear physics in the UK. Um, Rutherford was the new laboratory that was under construction here at Howell and therefore it was obvious that this was a good choice. And you were newly married at that stage as well? Well then maybe that was the most exciting part of the, the move. We had just got married and immediately packed everything into the car and came here and we had a few months in Abingdon in the hostel planning to buy a house in the area but uh, we were moved. I was posted to the CERN laboratory in Geneva came back to Didgut for a couple of years and then finished up in Harwell in 1965. Happy to spend the rest of your life in Harwell rather than in Scotland? Well, many people expected that when I retired we would move immediately to Scotland. It was the farthest thing from our mind. We had been in the village for well, 45 years. We'd enjoyed every year of it and we were, obviously, we were going to stay here with our friends and the village that we were we loved him. You'd lived in Didcot for a couple of years before you moved to Harwell, so you were presumably aware of Harwell as a village and chose to come here. Yes, before we went to live in Switzerland, that would be five years previous to coming to the village, we had looked at the village as a possible place to live. When we came back from Switzerland to live in Didcot, we noticed that there were houses being built in the village and it was a great opportunity for us to move into a new estate in 1965 with other people who also were moving in from outside and so we were in a community of young people, people with children in a, a village which was a convenient and nice size. And this was in the, in the Croft? We started off in the Croft, yes. And then you lived in the Croft for some years? Yes, it must have been in the Croft for about 15 years. And then we moved to Tudor Cottage in Burr Street. And then after you retired, you moved again? Yes, we found a nice house with a stream running through it. And we're here for quite some time now, I hope. Good. What were your first impressions of Harwell when you moved here? Well, we were comparing it with, I think, our own environment in Glasgow. Where Glasgow and uh, North Lanarkshire, where we came from, was an area where there were still a lot of coal mines and steelworks. So we were really changing from an industrial area to come to a very strongly rural area. And, of course, with all the cherry orchards around, how, as a village, did feel very much as a, a rural community, as indeed it was. What about the facilities in the village when, when you arrived in 1965? The, there were many facilities which we regret we've lost. I mean, there must have been two butcher shops, there was the post office, which was, a, which was separate from um, the other shops. So there must be about five shops and five pubs. and. It, it was, it was fine, a nice village feel about it. Of course, we've lost several of these, and um, there's been the growth of supermarkets and out of shop, out of town shopping, which uh, society has changed, but the, the village too has changed. Um, can you tell me briefly about your work and career progression at the Rutherford? Well, I came in as a research physicist, and in fact, when I joined, there were only three of us. And that was one of the reasons why I was sent off to ply my trade in Geneva because the accelerator at Rutherford was not ready, it wasn't cons finished construction. Um, so I came back and had 15, 20 years 
doing research with what was called the Nimrod machine. And from then on I had various posts in engineering and technology and computing, essentially as managing facilities for the university researchers coming into the laboratory to use and do the research. And then what happened towards the end of your career? Well, I became eventually director of Rutherford, deputy chief executive of the research council, finally the chief executive. So I suppose I've had every management post that was going at the time. And is there anything in particular in your career at the Rutherford that you're particularly proud of? Well, at the time I was very proud of the research work that I was doing, but of course looking back after 40 years, then that's no longer of any great interest. But I did in particular enjoy the final years when there was a lot of discussion on new facilities, new facilities that have now since been built at Rutherford, the diamond machine, and there was the second target station for the ISIS facility. I was very deeply involved in both of these projects. In effect, I was the interface between the government officials and the research councils. And you had an involvement in deciding whether they were located here or elsewhere? No, that wasn't my decision. Uh, my original decision, the, but the proposal that I made initially was that the diamond machine should be built in the north of England. Um, but when the concept of the machine changed to envelop more medical and biological research, um, the funding bodies wanted to see it built in an area of the country where there was a large research community, either Cambridge, Oxford or London, and Rutherford became the obvious choice. Anything more about your career and your work at the Rutherford that might be of interest to people going to the village website? Well, I think when they look at the whole complex of science facilities that we have here, and people will note that they've the Howell Laboratory itself started in 1947, Rutherford was 1957, and while nuclear power has gone more into the industrial arena, there's very little research being done there, the more academic side of the nuclear physics, as well as other things like research using lasers, uh, space astronomy or space earth observation, these are very dominant at Rutherford. and. Rutherford has a future which will continue long beyond my lifetime, I reckon, and that's from 1957. So I think it's a scientific community that we live in, and it's been a flourishing and successful one. Now, many people living in the village are aware of the Rutherford, or Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. They're aware of, of the, the Harwell site. Mm -hmm. um, they may not be clear about the interactions between the two, both historically and, and today. Well, the original design for the accelerator, the original accelerator Nimrod at Rutherford, was carried out by staff of the Atomic Energy Authority, who were based here on the Harwell site. That's where the expertise had been for several years. But because the accelerator was going to be used predominantly by university scientists, it was felt that the environment of a secure area and the fence and all of the other issues that were going on on the site. It was not appropriate to remain in the Harwell site, but to have it adjacent. And in fact, it was, it was the land that Rutherford is on belongs to Rutherford. It was, it's, it was originally Atomic Energy Authority land, but it was sold to Rutherford. And Rutherford has been independent of Harwell ever since.